<coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chair. And uh, good afternoon to all. And it's uh, really proud and I'm privileged to be here uh, for this uh, in this summit. Uh, so while talking about the regulations of the biologicals, I would, uh, so can we go to the next slide? Because we have a very limited time. So uh, I would like to uh, start with it. So we'll go through the slides very first, just to save the time. Uh, so can summarize initially, the biologicals are considered as uh, new drugs as per the new drugs and the clinical trial rules under the Drugs and Cosmetics Act and rules for the purpose of the regulation. And uh, so when is it is new drugs, it means that it has not been used in the Indian population uh, to a significant extent to establish the safety and the efficacy. So as uh, it was already said that these are very highly complex heterologous uh, medical products and hence uh, there has to be specific consideration in respect of the development of the, uh, the chemistry manufacturing control data, non-clinical data and the clinical data which will provide a clear understanding of the regulatory landscape for this, their development and approval in a scientific manner. So these uh, products are required to be characterized and manufactured in compliance with the uh, good manufacturing practices. The manufacturing processes for every biological uh, products are to be validated, defined, and controlled adequately to ensure batch-to-batch -batch consistency. I would emphasize again for the regulatory standpoints. Uh, so, uh, and this is important even the, before the drug is marketed. Uh, so it is important that adequate data on the quality, safety, and efficacy. In general, uh, this, these are to be generated before the approval uh, to establish the safety and effectiveness of this product throughout the product life cycle. Um, so I would now like go to the slides uh, very first. Like, please, next slide. Uh, so this is what I said about the introduction. The next slide, please. Uh, the some of the t definitions which are well known two are from the uh, the uh, uh, the who and uh, one is the uh, from the biosimilar guidelines the guidelines and the new drugs clinical trial rules where we define similar biologics as a comparable to the reference biologics which is already approved in the country or uh, uh, innovators product next so these are the various uh, bodies which are also along with CDSU are responsible for the regulations. We can go to the next, very specific to the biologicals. Next slide, please. Uh, so the uh, specific to these, uh, this, there is the other than CDSU who is responsible for uh, giving the permission for the, so it starts with the, in the stepwise manner if we consider, then it's the starting with the manufacturing, giving the manufacturing license for test and analysis or for the preclinical development. And then, uh, so here uh, along with the state drug controllers are also responsible for initially licensing a facility for the manufacturing uh, of the test batches, either for the preclinical development, development stage. And then, uh, then comes so finally, uh, when the final manufacturing licenses are also given, then also the state, state drug controller along with the CDS were responsible for the uh, joint inspection and licensing. And uh, otherwise, uh, the CDSU is also responsible for the import and registration of all the biological products and also the uh, for giving the permission for the uh, clinical trials. So all cases, the pre-approvals are required for any phases of the clinical development. So in the pre-clinical pre stages, uh, this is uh, the R C G M the the review committee on the genetic manipulation of the under the Department of Biotechnology are responsible for the research and development at the preclinical evaluation stage up, up to the preclinical stages and also for the uh, import of the stains or for the control of the hazardous substances and specifically the genetically modified or living modified organisms, the uh, genetic appraisal, uh, the genetic engineering appraisal committee of the Ministry of Environment uh, and forest and climate change are also responsible. And then uh, we also have the Central Drug laboratory, so the CDL customers as well as in IB. So next slide, please. Uh, so these are the regulatory guidelines. Uh, we go to the next. 
so regarding the dozier requirements we the dozier requirements which is in the sugam online follows exactly the uh, ctd modules the common technical documents uh, as per the ich where the module 1 is on the overall summary the module thing the module 1 is on the administrative information module 2 being the overall summary of uh, the uh, of the non clinical clinical and the cmc part module 3 which requires a detailed requirements uh, starting from the developmental history from the strains the cell lines the cell banks the entire characterization so it uh, requires there is a specific requirement of capturing the entire developmental history of the uh, cell bank muster cell bank working cell bank and the seed stress as well as all the stages uh, starting from the <coughs> next stage from expansion or in case of the biosimilars from expression in the specific vector so it needs a complete characterization as i mentioned above along with this then the development of the manufacturing processes step wise for all the purification steps up to the purification and finally the product so and uh, the the complete uh, uh, validation of the analytical procedure is a requirement as well, as well as validated assay methods are essential uh, for establishing this um, so this what is in indicated in the cmc and it really uh, requires a complete validated process as i mentioned al earlier so then there is a module 4 uh, <coughs> the slides are there so the there is a module 4 uh, Uh, which overall is a non-clinical summary, uh, and the the module five is a clinical uh, trial data, the which which is a summary of all the phases of the clinical trials. So, we can go to the next slides, please. Uh, so as uh, we say that uh, in case of the if we go in a specific manner then the as i already mentioned about the chemistry then the non clinical there are various uh, toxicological data which is a specific toxicological toxicological data or a specific pharmacological data which are needed to establish the safety efficacy in the animal models and uh, and sometimes in the relevant species but it depends from uh, indigenous products which are to be manufactured in the country where there are extensive studies are needed and there can be some relevant uh, species studies or an abbreviated toxicological study when the product is already the safety of the product is established or in case of the biosimilars but in case of the vaccines also the animal challenge studies is important and also the study is required in the specific age uh, considering the uh, the specific immunogenicity is also essential when there is a vaccines to be developed uh, so that is what is the non clinical part going to the next clinical part uh, so uh, so here uh, this is also the detailed and where you, a product is to be used for a longer time there are additional studies or when it is to be used in the special population uh, like the the different specific population then it has to be studied in those populations and such we call them as a developmental uh, reproductive studies which are also needed uh, additionally so next um um coming to this uh, clinical trial phases as uh, we have said that the first phase 1 2 3 are as such required and uh, sometimes uh, it is it is important to have a uh, traditional design like a, a placebo controlled randomized uh, study is actually needed but in some cases this is also what we have seen in during the covid also the adaptive designs are acceptable where we can have the uh, phase 1 by 2 or phase 2 by 3 uh, as per the requirement and then they can be uh, gradually uh, from one phase to another the study can goes as per the plan and the design and it has to be statistically uh, significant and also uh, it is required to be in the so while the phase 1 is being planned in the healthy subjects the phase 2 being planned and in a smaller number of people in general and in case of the vaccine always it has to be a age de escalation study uh, and in case of the phase 2 it can be in uh, in case of vaccines definitely in several hundreds and uh, also it's to be in the specific age group the dose the dose interval those are to be captured and what is required is in the phase 2 normally while in the phase 1 there has to be a three dose is uh, 
is being uh, expected. The la the last from the last dose in the in the phase two should be the should be lesser than the should be the dose should be less than the last dose of the phase one. And in the phase three, it is being captured. It is being done in a several thousands in case of vaccines. It is expected. Whereas in the case of the biosimilar, there are different guidances. Uh, we can put so next slide, please. Uh, so this is uh, the pathway uh, which goes in the SUGAM online, the different levels of review and along with the subject expert committee, the evaluation is being carried out. Uh, so they are, they are responsible for the evaluations of the clinical trial protocol as well as for the safety evaluations in case of the periodic safety update reports, which is the post-marketing. Yes. So quickly we go through the slides only, <laughs> right, sir? <laughs> so thank Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Uh, so these are all the different application process. Next slide. <laughs> Uh, so this is just to just shall finish up on this. So the accelerated approval process and the expedited review process, which are the two uh, which are under in the NDCT rules, have enabled uh, uh, to do the various uh, uh, approval process in an expedited manner or in an accelerated approval manner, considering the severity of the disease, prevalence of the disease, and uh, if there is a life-threatening disease, where the approval could be carried out even based on uh, some surrogate markers or on the basis of where. Uh, phase uh, two trial, there is a sufficient safety and efficacy data, then such approval could be carried out. So these are the regulatory enablers uh, which have helped us uh, in doing various uh, approval approvals. Next, next please. Uh, so this, uh, the processes which has been, next please, next, next. And uh, these are the biosimilars which I have already said it is next. Uh, so where there is an, next. The abbreviated procedures are followed with a with a pharmacokinetic study and a phase three study in usual. Next, 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 please. Okay, next, next. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs>